Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. It's 3v3 ladder action this afternoon. Yes, you heard me right. We've had lots of 3v3s in the past, but never before have we seen a 3v3 ladder. It's our first inclusion of the new patch in the diverse quilt that is the FAF matchmaking system. And uh, you can see it's been around, I think it's been around for like a month. Something like that, maybe a bit more. It's long enough anyway for these people to rack up some pretty impressive rankings in the 3v3 mod. You see you've got 2100 here and 1800 there. I did check out these players beforehand and had a look at their global ranking, which is of course how we determine the threshold of whether you're an average Joe or a pro. And uh, all but one were over that arbitrary 1500 threshold that we set some years ago for some reason. So they're mostly pros and the one Joe was a high level Joe anyway. So expect a reasonable showcase of ability today on this generated map, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail in just a second. First of all, let's give these players some time, allow them to gate him and we'll discuss their shiny colors, their starting locations and their teams. We'll call this team one up here at the top, this team two down here at the bottom. Going first for team one up at the top left hand side of your screen, we have Stay Sane. Stay Sane zero. We'll see if he manages it. He's going UEF. That's a good start. And he's opening first land in baby blue. Team member number two for team one. It's another blue. This time it's electric blue. And it's Cybran bless him. It's Tran Dan up at the top here, and he's opened first land. And last but not least, for Team 1 over on the eastern approaches, it's uh, Ikigami. Uh, or Ikigami. I, I actually had somebody in the comment section the other day saying I should go on a course. And, uh, you know, a course to learn how to pronounce Japanese names, because apparently... I messed them up. And I found that a bit offensive because uh, I don't think they should be singled out. I mess up people's names from all over the world equally. Thank you very much. The Japanese are nothing special on that front. Uh, anyway, it's probably... Is that even Japanese? I don't know. I was just saying it Japanese. Answers in the comments section below. Uh, anyway, here he is. And he's going Seraphim in Vivacious Violet opening first land. So it's a Seraphim... A Cybrin and a UEF there for Team 1. Let's check out Team new, Team 2 now starting on the right-hand side to begin with. We have Battlefront. He's going Seraphim in Ferrari Red opening first land. Team member number 2 to his left in the middle of the screen right at the edge. It's Plasma Wolf. This time going Aeon going first land second air. And last but not least, way out west, go west, it's a Jew, uh, and he's going Aeon as well in Halley Borange Orange. A little bit of song there, threw that in free of charge. All very welcome, it's all part of the show. And uh, he's going first land. So two Aeon and a Seraphim there for Team 2. Players to watch out for, of course, Edua on the bottom left-hand side, 2100 rated in 3v3 ladder. He is their top man, If uh, assuming that's correct correct appraisal of their abilities and on the top right hand side for team one ikigami and 1800 the uh, only actual average joe as far as global ranking was, was concerned i believe is battlefront and literally i mean we're talking about a 1400 not too dis dissimilar from his actual 3v3 ranking here so really it's not too much of a handicap he'll know his way around a sopcom map that's for certain and speaking of sopcom maps what has the map gen made for us today well that is the reclaim situation incidentally someone was asking how to see reclaim in faf you hold control and shift and that just brings up that little overlay there and it'll tell you all of the distribution and uh, it's nice because you zoom out and it clumps it all together and you zoom in and you see a more uh, definitive local picture, if you will. Some stones kicking around here and there and all the usual places, a few trees and whatnot, and some pretty big pebbles kicking it about in the centre around this uh, rather redundant formation. You've got one completely empty plateau, which uh, is not scalable from any side, as far as I can see. You might be able to pass through here, potentially, not 100% on that, but uh, I don't think you're definitely going to be able to do it on this side. Either way, you're not going to be wanting to funnel an army through there. So essentially, the middle is out of bounds. You've got a mex on each of these four adjoining plateaus and a mex in the valley. So holding the area is probably worthwhile if you can manage it, although it's going to be hard. But essentially, or ostensibly, this is going to be a real left and right flanking show with not much going on down the middle. That's what I would expect anyway. So that's the map. That's what it's generated for us today. Game quality at 97%. It's not the best balance we've had from an algorithmically balanced game in a ladder match, but it's certainly 
acceptable. 17.15 for Team 2, the average, and on Team 1, 16.66. Great Fire of London, in case you weren't aware. A little bit of trivia, also free of charge there at uh, Guilecast. You're very, very welcome. I throw all these things in to hide from the fact that uh, I don't know what I'm doing in life. Uh, so, comms moving out of their main bases now. Much more activity on that front on the eastern flank. Battlefront getting closer to the center first. I'm wondering if he's been scoopy scooperson'd. Well, he's pulled in about 660 mass, which is more than anybody on Team 1 has pulled in. But Plasma Wolf absolutely going for it inside the first four and a half minutes here with 931. Probably got some engineers out to some crucial, crucial mass fields and got some pretty big pebbles to begin with and we have our first little air entanglement out west i believe and that will be run locally by stay sane who is advancing now with his commander heading south with reasonable gusto with a nice little trio of strikers tagging along for the ride scout plane out from plasma wolf on team two that's the picture as far as they're concerned Having a good old nosy about what's going on. But look at this. Well, we've been yapping. Nice little run by up the right-hand side from Battlefront. And uh, he's destroyed one mechs. Cancelled the construction of another. That's the dead engineer. That's Steve. He was working on it. And that would have been a uh, another one he was going to work on. Might potentially lose this one in the backfield also as one fan gets to the top of the screen. Oh, down to 106. Two more hits. No, one more hit. Oh, perfect arrival of the Thams, and because he wasn't paying attention, the defending Thams for Ikigami, they got uh, primaried as uh, a matter of course, and that saved that mass extractor with just 42 hit points left to its name, but still a nice little early push here from Battlefront, who of course is uh, fighting a bit of an uphill battle, that's their top rated player, and he's their weaker player, so uh, it would probably like some help actually from Plasma Wolf, since he's probably not going to be doing an awful lot with his comm, in the center. It would make sense for him to drift that way, but so far it looks like he's heading off over to Ajua. Gun upgrade on the way, although paused for Ikigami. 9% there. Waiting to uh, have that reinitiated. I'm wondering if it was paused because of that attack up the right hand side, although I don't know how long that's been going. Little duo of fams trying to get their own back after that little skirt up the right hand side got about half the HP down on that mass extractor down to 306 hit points before Battlefront interceded with his comm and a couple of other units Edua backing up here Stay Sane has completed the Zef Amp upgrade on his comm big old shiny gun there so that's a lot of extra damage probably why Edua is backing up Some Auroras on the field, holding their position against a contingent of strikers. Stay saying continuing to advance with that upgraded commander. 11 kills to his name so far. About halfway done on his first rank in veterancy. How are team eco levels looking well team two are pulling in 173 mass per tick team one pulling in 171 it's more or less neck and neck team two are up about 500 mass in total mass group maybe less than that actually maybe about a hundred 200 mass something like that there's not much in it it's all very close ed Jua gets to work on an upgrade and he's going for a gun upgrade i'm wondering if we'll see a second gun upgrade follow on after it. The double Aeon Sniper Com seems to be a feature generally of pros. If you're going Aeon and you're going to get one gun upgrade, why stop there? Treat yourself, push the boat out, get rate of fire and range. Ikigami, though, taking some damage because he's rolled up against some Yenzines. So Battlefront squeezing out some Tech 2 units on the ground here. I'm wondering if that took Ikigami a little bit by surprise. He's shed at least 50% of his HP in that encounter, down to 5,300 hit points out of 12,650. 
cleans the house with most of that group of units. Although there's a couple more Zooies coming in. But yeah, Battlefront surprising his opponent there potentially. And there's more Yenzines inbound. I'm wondering if Ikigami will be a little bit more cautious with his next play. Inside 10 minutes. Never want to go down inside 10 minutes. Make him work for it. How many Yenzines are we looking at now for Battlefronts? Oh, that's not bad. 11 T2 tanks on the field, all within reasonably close proximity. And another run by, and this time it's T2 run by with more Yenzines who've reached this. Well, it seems doomed group of mass points up here at the top right hand side of the screen three dead mass points the other one badly damaged but it survives as the final yenzine flees to the back of the field ah oh, finish off this one and it's being upgraded as well it's 81 percent done still with 42 hit points that would have been absolutely crucial although he might bag this one high alpha strike low rate of fire one more shot, and that's 90% done towards T2. Lovely kill there. Ikigami almost short stacking the field. In fact, the person who is short stacking is Stay Sane. And I'm not sure that's going to change because Edua is on the warpath here. He's got a huge contingent of blazes. He's got a handful, well, a handful's the wrong word. He's got a couple of mobile shield gens. And he did go for that second gun upgrade on the comm. So that's a lot of firepower on the field up here and it's almost right at the front of Stay Sane's base. He has got a decent amount of engineers in front of this base now working on defences. He's got one or two pillars kicking around and of course he's got the gun upgrade on his comm but that's a lot of damage. Admittedly blazes don't put out that much for T2 tanks but when you have enough of them and that is a lot that could be real real trouble forward come a merry contingent of T1 UEF spam trying to hold a Dewa at bay and trying to buy enough time for these engineers to get more point defense online they've got two up and running they're working on a third two more queued up after that we do have air superiority fighters entering the area now for Trandon and he's queued up some whalers in there as well he's now getting to work on four whalers if that bill queue is to be believed if he doesn't change it how are we on air superiority fighters for Plasma Wolf and Team 2? He's got two out. He's got a handful of T1 interceptors. He's not messing about with gunships yet. Working on ASFs and spy planes only. Nano repair upgrade started in quite an audacious place. Might end up losing a few engineers here, but I don't think he'll have to cancel it. He's advancing, he's attacking these engineers and the comm and the triads simultaneously, overcharging with his commander as he goes. The blazes finish off all of the engineers, but Stay Sane will complete the nano repair upgrade to grant him 56 at hit point a second regen. That will be a real reprieve for him as far as he's concerned. All of the blazes around the comm have disappeared. They've moved further into the backfield and check that out. All the core mass assassinated in the main base of Stay Sane, who's now pulling in a rather poxy 43 mass per tick. The Hydro in the back end of his base goes down, and now it's mass points belonging to Trandon, which are under threat. And in fact, he's not going after those blazes to try and defend those mass points. Instead, he's looking for a comm kill. Those whalers he was working on dispatched immediately to go after a Jewish comm. But a second group of reinforcements roll up from the south, complete with flak, with shield gens. He's working on a T1 anti-air turret. Mobile shield gens not packing the wallop needed, though, to maintain continual coverage around the commander. The shields go down. Next up, those gunships focusing on the flak batteries. And once they go down, they resume their attack on the commander. Edu are now down to 6,000 hit points and falling. Another shield gen 
moves in to cover. Nice escort detail keeping the skies clean for team one. There have been periodic uh, attacks here from Plasma Wolf who's been coming in here and there with new air superiority fighters. Oh, that one there is begging for a couple of blows and it gets one shot out of the sky. Leaving two whalers badly damaged. This one might be about to go down to flak fire as well. Yeah. And one whaler from the original three remains and Ajua gets a little bit of a reprieve. That was probably a pretty hairy experience for him. He's got about 5,800 HP. And still there are blazes running amok in the main base of Stay Sane, who's now pulling in even less mass. He's down to 38 mass per tick. Team 2 are ahead by about, well, sometimes about 80, 90 mass. That is significant. And just look at all of the dead mass points in Stay Sane's territory. Lovely, lovely work here from Edua. Keeping the pressure on continuously. And now, more mass points belonging to Trandon are under threat. What's happening down here, though? Look at this! Strat Bomber out! Oh, it's a beautiful one! Taking out about five engineers and a T2 P gen. Edua has lost one, two, three, four mass points to strap bomb attack and whaler pressure. Very nicely done indeed. 14 kills for this revenant so far. Trandon really getting some payback here for his teammate. Edua is now short stacking the field on mass production at 35 mass per tick this is excellent aerial retali retaliation from team one very very nice to see indeed and then it goes just a little bit quiet we still have one whaler in operation on the bottom, bottom left hand side of the screen lots and lots of Flak being pumped out here, there, and everywhere. Trying to contain this air threat. What have we got here? A couple of random thams. A little bit of T1 spam from Ikigami. How on earth they got all the way over here? I have no idea. But despite that air attack, Edua is back at it. Assaulting Stay Sane's base once again. Absolutely crazy. Edua really putting this Rambo com to work. Overcharging the T2 PDs. Stay sane. Standing strong outside the front of his base though and advancing forward, forcing Edua to drop back and again giving his engineers just a bit of space to spam up defenses once more. And I wondered if we might see some kind of walling off operation over here. They really don't want any more of those cheeky blaze runbys getting up into uh, top left hand corner and causing havoc because that really hurt their resourcing options. And now we are officially at T3 ground stage battlefront with some siege tanks out. Ikigami's ground force still seems very low tech it's predominantly t1 we've got one badly damaged ilshiva up here he has got t3 land access currently producing mobile shield gens and i think some sniper bots probably because he's under some sniper fire himself battlefront moving up with those sniper bots literally as we speak just taking pot shots at these T1 ground forces from the relative safety of the shield gen which is well out of range of those T1 forces anyway. Back in on the western flank Edua still unrelenting in his pressure 54 kills to his name now 3 stars on the com Stay, uh, stay Sane also at 3 stars and 
37 kills for him. A little wave of T1 bombers get absolutely shredded by all of the flak that Ajua has included in this unit comp. Stay sane, just throwing anything he can at this position to try and stave off this pressure from Ajua, and he's getting a bit of a point defense creep going now. Just building those triads forward in a line. That's quite a lot of mobile shielding. That's what's allowing Edua just to stomp forward, take out some of these defenses and drop back again. Ooh, saucy little tack missile launcher over here, firing its first missile. Who's going to be the lucky recipient? Actually, that's the first missile. It's going in towards Trandan. Trandan, who's stationary up here, just a stone throw with his comm, but it's not the target. The target are the Mexes. One of them goes down instantly, as does the second one, as the missile snakes its way in. Takes out all but one of the mass storages. Once again, a Ajua renews his attack, but stay sane. Bit by bit, he's starting to amass a nice little collection of pillars here. And it's going to get harder and harder for a Ajua to punch his way towards the base because he's not only facing off those, of course, he's got a wall of point defense up in front of the base, although he's lost one or two. In fact, that little creep that he had going on has been completely disrupted. Those were the emplacements there. But a nice little mass field. Some 7,000 mass. Ripe for the scooping for Stay Sane. Revenant out again for Trandan. Looked like he was dropping a bomb on a Jewer's com. That com on about 12,400 hit points. Let's do a very quick ASF count because I want to see who's got a better mastery of the skies. Plasma Wolf for Team 2. Has 37 air superiority fighters on the field. Trandon, or Trandan, has 40. So it's pretty close. If he can win another air battle, he can put these two whalers and a badly damaged Revenant back into the fray. Although if he's going anywhere near a Dewar, he's going to have a serious flak problem to contend with. Look at that. So he's busy launching TAC missiles himself. He's got 16 kills. It's a five-star TAC missile launcher, that Serpentine. But he doesn't want to be... <laughs> he doesn't want to be victim of any TAC missile BS. That's a very impressive line of volcanoes. He has the Aeon tactical missile defense. Nothing getting through that. Just not going to happen. And finally, at about 21 minutes or so, the game takes a moment to breathe. Players taking stock and wondering what their next move is. Battlefront's next move is to get into experimental production. And maybe that will help break a deadlock on this eastern approach. Both of these guys with shield gens, sniper bots and the like... Pretty sizable amount of sniper bots here for Ikigami. Not placed brilliantly, I think it's fair to say, being as they're firing directly into the hillside. If he just moved up a little bit, he could put some fire down. But it's a rather... It's an awkward brow of the hill there between these two bases. Tough to get uh, a good line of sight on without exposing yourself too much. Know how these guys hate to expose themselves. New healthy revenant circling over Team One's territory for Trandan. Let's have a quick look at who's doing what on the eco side of things. Plasma Wolf at 246 mass per tick. So Team Two's air player properly ecoing hard. Compare that to Trandan, who's Team One's eco uh, air player. He's at 146. That's a very sizable mismatch and could lead to major air disparities a little bit later on, unless Trandan gets that fixed. I'm wondering if that's as a result of the TAC missile attacks. Obviously, 
these mass points over here got harassed recently. I think he lost at least these two we saw go down. I don't know if these got taken out as well. It probably would have been prime real estate for the attack missile launcher to go after, which has now got 20 kills to its name. So it's a probably fair bet that he took out all of those. So Trandan is recovering from that attack. Look at that, that little forward fire base. Out muscled by a combination shield creep, which is covering these sniper bots. New shield goes down. Sniper bots advance. I did of that end scene from Zulu. Ooh. And that forward position just wiped out. And Battlefront falls to drop back. Now we've seen Battlefront's working on his first experimental. Have we got any Ethotas in production up here for Ikigami? Not that I can see. What about over here? On the western side of the map. Ah, the mighty clink hammer's on the way. Always a pleasure. Now, working on T3 reactors. Stay sane, pulling in 159 mass per tick. And Dua, surprisingly, pulling in only 139. Is he power locked? No, that is surprising. But he has still got T1 mexes back here, which he hasn't teched up. These obviously got destroyed in those air attacks of Trandon a little while ago. Was that a nice saucy little hard drop from Ed Dewar, though into the top left hand corner? It certainly looks like it. Harbingers in behind enemy lines. But uh, only results in just the one mech kill. Whalers on hand by Dan. And there is the first experimental. It's Battlefront, and will he send it straight into the fray? I think he would be mad not to. Surely he'd want to make a play for Ikigami's comm, even. Yeah, I know there's a lot of sniper bots here, but he must be able to tank enough of that to break this position. You would have thought. Plasma Wolf can probably fend off air attacks from Trandon. Come on, be bold. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You've got a decent amount of siege tanks as well. Send it in. Send it! Scout plane wave out from Ikigami. Who's going to spot the threat? Little artillery battery going up just to the east of that main firebase. And is that another drop? Uh, it might not be a drop. It might be a little scuttle. A scuttle through a blasted hole in the wall. And that did take down a couple of mexes, I believe. Quick pause there. And here comes the Thota. How will Team 1 respond? You can see Ikigami legging it back to base as fast as his big metal backside will move that fire base is toast but the Athota has taken a decent amount of damage it's lost about a third of its health already engineers with a lot of T1 point defense which is stubbornly still remaining operational units coming in need to deal with that Three installations get taken out. The Athota is just not bad. Those 20,000 hit points that it's missing compared to a GC, it doesn't sound a lot, but it really makes a difference. Imagine 20,000 more hit points be in here at least before it died. It just makes a difference. Then, of course, the GC doesn't get the Ion Storm. You are taking long-range artillery fire an awful lot. Oh, that serpentine with 23 
kills to its name, fully five starred, is badly damaged. And with that, Ithota came up some th uh, Suthanus T3 mobile artillery. And they've got some mobile shield gens for coverage. But there's a lot of inbound sniper bot fire. if they're really going to be able to hurt the base that much. Now we have an Ithota on the way. Three quarters complete. As it clicks over into the green on the HP bar. Oh, he didn't manage to finish off that little side base to the right either. One lightning tank left in that mix. Plasma Wolf. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine air factories. Let's not count for Trandon. Let's work smarter, not harder. Eleven for Trandon. Trandon with 289 mass per tick. Plasma Wolf with 397. It's actually 1k income apiece for each team. Team 2 with a very marginal advantage by the looks of things. Even though they are down in overall mass accrued by some 55,000, something like that. And now both teams sit back and wait for the other to move. Ikigami happy for the breathing room. Completes one. Ithota has four more queued up behind it. Do a quick ASF count. That's a lot of fighters on the field. 139 for Dan and an extra 11 which are bingo on fuel. Plasma Wolf for team two. 160. So faring slightly better and if he can win an air battle... He might be able to get something done with a Tsar once he gets that built. Donut, donut underway. And we're at 7,000 hit points of 40k. So a ways to go there. Do we have the next Ithota ready anytime soon? Yes, we do. That's almost complete for Battlefront. And not before time. As Ikigami looks like he's squaring up to send one back at him. Round about in the middle of the field at the current time, but could push south at any moment. And this is a, it's an interesting decision to plop all of this infrastructure up front. Firebase, I'm all about it. Omni, sure, why not? Perfect map coverage for that radar. And lots of of anti-air capabilities. Look at all of this SAM firepower and flak. Combination of Mars and SAMs. But uh, the air factories? I mean, is it because he's got the build capacity there? So he figures I might as well just spam this up. Because that's in a, a very precarious place. But I won't second guess. Answers in the comment section below. What's your take on that, guys? Would you put it up there? And also, while you're down there, love, tell me about your day and give us a like and a subscribe, would you? It does wonders for my ego. We all know how that thing needs a regular massage. I'm all about uh, regular massages, but the less said about that, the better. Czar almost complete. 32k out of 40k done. Plasma Wolf lost Omni. What did you lose it to? Oh, okay. There's inbound artillery fire. No, it's not. Sorry. It's sniper bot fire. So, yeah, well, there you have it. It is a precarious location. So, was that. That really was. That was their Omni covering the whole map. We've got no solid intel now. We have got a scrying tool from either a Dua or Plasma Wolf. One of them has built that, uh, I forget what it's called actually, the actual name of it. Don't know exactly where it's located. But they definitely have one. 
So Ikigami not dashing headlong in with his first experimental or even dashing headlong in with the second. He is officially stockpiling. And, uh, I mean, it's not a terrible maneuver. Otherwise, you just get a single tit-for-tat thing going on. But there is the Tsar hovering now over the top of Battlefront's forces. Needs to be very careful because if that is engaged first, it would be oh so easy for Dan to pick that off and still more or less have an engage that runs equal with Plasma Wolf's fighters. That is not what you want at all. If you've got the air advantage or if you think you've got it, I'm not sure if he still has it. You want that air battle first. Clear the way. So 200 fighters now for Plasma Wolf. Trandan, who has a sizable pile now. 264 has utterly leapfrogged his opponent in ASF numbers. That is a major threat. Working now on the second Tsar. To be honest, if I was him, I would have that away from the front line. And I would have that on full-on air production manufacturing fighters also. That would be the way to go as far as I'm concerned. But this is wonderful commitment to air production. Tran Dan just pumping these fighters out now. Nice little mass fab farms going up around these T3 mexes. Ooh, a fat boy underway. Very, very nice indeed. Donut moving across the field, and that's very risky. If it's at the front, he can engage, he can take it out and still go even on the engage with the fighters. In fact, with the amount of fighters he's got, he would still win will likely win, unless the engage was absolutely horrendous. He would still likely win any fight. But Trandan feels like he's got the upper hand in numbers, so he's going to initiate. Moves his fighter squadrons forward. The air battle ensues. The donut does drop back, but look at the massacre. Plasma Wolf utterly outnumbered. His fighter squadrons annihilated. The Tsar picked off immediately as a result and then the fighters withdraw that's a terrible outcome for team two and their air aspirations well apparently he had 400 ASFs uh, yeah that was not great but uh, once again we always say it it's easy for us to comment you know we have full vision we have full intel that is not something that these players have access to. But uh, I don't know why he sent those restorers in. Was it just for fun? Maybe that it's uh, like an Egyptian thing and they were the slaves of the air superiority fighters. They had to go to their deaths with the masters. Something like that. And a major experimental battle underway on the eastern flank now, which looks like it's actually going badly for Battlefront, who was down on experimental numbers, but there are three Ion Storms now lurking around these three surviving Ithotas, and they are getting torched by them. Oh, and that's a bad outcome for Ikigami, who actually won the ground engagement, but didn't make it through the Ion Storms. Oh dear, and now that's a pretty sizable mass field in a good location for Team 2. Look at that, that's over 100,000 mass, like 110,000 mass just in this section alone. <clears throat> I wonder if that's uh, it's not including the, the big old wreck down here either. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, had a late night last night. Too much Romulan ale. And Dan loitering in his main base. And now, after winning that air battle, is he going on full strap bomber and gunship production? Because he should. There we have it. A massive group of revenants out in the east. Plasma Wolf spots the threat, tries to intercede, tries to go after the strap bombers. But Trandan keeps them. 
behind the fighters and is now going to absolutely murder Battlefront's resourcing operations. Look at that. All T3 though, so they need two or three bombs, I think, to knock them out. Now coming after the main base, going after a nuke launcher which had been completed but didn't survive long enough to launch its first nuke. And now moving on to Plasma Wolf's air production facilities and that's not going to help him get back into this game. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Meanwhile, we've got a big old push on the ground on the west. Plasma Wolf did produce another Tsar. Might as well send that in and just suicide it because as soon as those fighters come back they are going to massacre it. Look at this, three GCs just pushing their way now through the main base of Stay Sane. What's going on down here? Plasma Wolf finishing off the last of the Strat Bombers. Stay Sane fully on the run. He's about to lose his fat boy to those GCs. Nothing that long range tank can do about those assault bots when they're up close and personal. Stay Sane on the run. His only hope now is a massive gunship squadron coming in from the east which doesn't currently exist or some kind of aerial evac. I'm not seeing a transport en route and that GC is getting awfully close now. Uh, laser face locked onto the back of Stay Sane's head. And now he doesn't have to worry about staying anything. Down he goes. Our first ejection at 40 minutes into this game. And also our first nuke out. And it's out from Ikigami. It's going after Battlefront. We keep an eye on these two theatres because these two GCs are still going. Battlefront's com in the main base. Does he have anti-nuke? Oh, double fired. That was a waste of an anti-nuke missile there. And he says WTF, this SMD, but oh no! Trandan! Trandan gets caught by the GC. Why was he still there? Why wasn't he further on the run? Look, he had a transport loitering. It looked like it was coming in to try and evac the commander. And Battlefront now facing forward momentum from Ikigami. Look at this. His comms very close to the front of his shield. Check on the mini-map. You can see those Ithotas from Ajua still rampaging through the remnants of Trandan's base. But Battlefront could be our next ejection. And Ikigami could do with it because he's currently facing 3v1 right now. Battlefront needs to duke. Oh, eats the plasma ball of death. Tries to juke again. Doesn't get out of range though. No inbound transport. So he goes down. It's now a 1v2. The last of the GCs at the top. By Trandan's old base. That's destroyed. We do have one more in the west. For a duer. Continuing up there to clear out everything, but the rest of what was Battlefront's base is about to go down as Ikigami continues his pressure towards the bottom right-hand corner. Splitting up the two experimentals now, one to finish off everything down here, the other one moving in towards Plasma Wolf's base. Plasma Wolf sees the danger coming, says no thank you. I need to get my comm out of there, so he's out, uh, evacing out towards Edua. There's also... Nasty little group of sniper pots, but uh, that's being dealt with by that GC pretty thoroughly. Inbound Harbingers up at the top of the screen for Ed Dewar, Handled with ease and grace by a defending Ethota. GC taking Strat Bomber fire. So, what are we looking at now? Both teams have had their air production facilities destroyed. But Ikigami has the remnant of Trandan's 
old Air Force, so he's still got some 35 ASFs with six that are out of fuel on top of that. And then he's got a couple of whaler gunships and about four or five revenant bombers. Still trying to deal with this Colossus at the top left-hand corner of the screen and still not managing it. Everything up here is going to go down. It's going to lose all of the mexes. Oh my god, finish that one off. Thank you. <laughs> Just needs more bombers. Many, many more. Kills off the mechs, but actually all of the mass fabricators around it. They seem to be coping just fine. Not too long before the next nuke is ready from Ikigami. Nuke defense has been, I would imagine, comprehensively annihilated in the east, certainly. Edua should still have some functional SMD, but Team 2 are up by about 150 mass, something like that, 140, 150 mass per tick. But Ikigami has an air advantage. He's also got a bit of an open door down here, and it's a very leaky boundary with Ethotas stomping their way through he got to defend with? Well, he's got a hardy group of harbingers. What he really wants is a colossus or two. He's nearly got another one ready to go. But he has got two up here. The problem is, though, of course, he hasn't got any way of defending against air pressure other than ground to air. We have got one redeemer moving in. Or a couple of them, actually. Ithota sees the GC coming, says, Oh, no, you've got more hit points than me. No, thank you. And turns tail and runs. That's the reclaim situation. What a thorough mess that is. But still tons of mass to be had. Two Ithotas versus a GC and a veritable sea of harbingers. I'm going to go with the Colossus winning this engagement though maximum damage is going to be inflicted by this ion storm on all of these harbingers which are now sitting right in the middle of it and now there's two for one in fact the GC is probably going to go down also uh, 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 uh. see you later <laughs> oh dear bottom right hand corner infrastructure about to go down, but actually, nicely placed Ithota gets finished at the perfect time. So he should be able to defend, although, I mean, so there's no point. He knows he's not going to win that. He will just go after all of the important infrastructure. There goes all of the engineers. Production is ceased on the next Ithota. Oh, don't waste time chewing that down. Go after the resources, surely. There's point defences wailing away on him. And there's two T3 mexes down there which are ripe for the plucking. See, look at all the mass that is being scoopersoned. Huge quantities of it. And now it's very even. In fact, Team 1, after this attack down here, Ikigami is actually ahead. Just by about one mass per tick. And then it changes again. <laughs> well, I think uh, well, it's pretty damn close, put it that way. But if you look at total mass, Team 1 up 370,000 mass over the course of the game. I just get the feeling that Ikigami has a slightly better setup. He's got lots and lots of build capacity. He has a nuke launcher. He is pumping out these Athotas. 
He still has some air force to speak of. He's so going to send it in against this Tsar, though. Now, if I were a Jewer, which of course I'm not, because uh, I'm much less talented, after the successful defense here on the Western Approaches, I'd be bringing this back and I would just be setting it on produce air superiority fighters. That's all I would be doing. Just makes sense. Three Ithotas actually backtracking. The Tsar now coming for them. Surely you would be shadowing this a little bit with your fighters. You don't want to be running them over the top of this little aerial firebase. Admittedly. You don't want to be throwing those away. See on the mini map, mini map in come the fighters. He's enabled stealth to try and mask their approach. Locking onto the donut. One pass. Shield is gone. And at least two thirds of the health. And there it goes. Now get your fighters out of there. And crucially, he's held on to those three chickens. A duo ready to defend with another C of Harbingers and another GC. But uh, that is a little bit of a mismatch. Finally, this firebase is going to get dealt with. As Nithota comes to grab that. And another Ithota, which came out of the base in this direction, coming down here. A nice little Harbinger drop into the backfield. Trying to make a nuisance of itself. Or maybe it, it came up right the way around. We have actually got a few restorers for a duo. But look at this. Spy planes out for Ikigami. They'll be well aware of the locale of Edgewa's comp. It's there. And he's now got four Ithotas there and three more coming in behind them. And another one attacking from the north. This, uh, this is not looking great for Team 2. They are able to put out some air power at least. In comes some strats. So, one Ithota down, another two moving up, a duo moving away from the threats to the east, but is it unwittingly moving into the arms of the other one? Looks like it might very well be. Was he just not aware of it? He should have been heading southeast. Oh, not southeast, sorry, southwest. Uh, ah, uh, and there he goes, and that is done, and Plasma Wolf follows on shortly after with the control K. He knew that was done. Yeah, once it all kicked off, there really was no way out of it for Team 2. Yeah, they were pulling in okay mass, but too much of their infrastructure had been downed. The sheer amount of engineers that uh, Ikigami had at his disposal at the turn of the tide, coupled with, of course, the huge amount of reclaim on his side of the field, on both sides of the field, admittedly, but he was really able to capitalize on it. Kept shoving experimentals together and pushing them down the eastern approach down here, which meant, of course, very limited access to any of the stuff out to the east for Team 2 to recycle. And, uh, yeah, the rest was history. Well played, Ikigami, who I think today I'm going to call MVP. I think that's fair enough. Do you think that's fair enough? I'd love to hear what you think, guys. Answers in the comment section below with your MVP. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you would like more, if you've seen everything on the main channel, or even if you just want to support me more generally, the best way to do that is to sign up to my Patreon. It's only a dollar a month. You can't get a better deal than that. And uh, I try to upload a new cast every week. We've got some 80-something on there. Uh, I had a bit of a mare last week. Uh, I didn't get cast out, obviously, on the YouTube channel or on here. Uh, sorry, on uh, the Patreon side of things. Uh, because um, I had a lot on, but I actually I cast this game twice. <laughs> this one, I, I forgot to press record. 
I did forget to press record. I pressed record quite a bit, but some days I find it really hard to get going and I mess up quite a bit. Uh, so I have to restart. And sometimes I, I mess up just pressing the record button. It was a bad day all round, really. It wasn't great. It was pretty awful. Uh, I ended up burning dinner, I think, as well. So that was bad. But yeah, if you want to support me in my failing life and make me generally feel a little bit happier, I won't say no. So yeah, check out the uh, the Patreon guys, and it'll give you access to Discord as well. You can come chat with our little community over there, which is always fun. All right, take care of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.